Hi, this is Mike Kent, Professor of Computer Information Technology, San Jacinto College. I'm going to go on today and continue showing you more about Visual Basic. I'm going to launch Visual Studio 2013 for desktop. And in this example, I want to create a program that has some more of the basic elements of the user interface. So I can either create my new project by saying new project right here on the start page, or if the start page isn't open, I can just go File, New Project. I want a Visual Basic project for Windows, Windows Form application. That's not a very good name. Let's call it Example 2. And then I need to pay attention to where my project's going to be saved. So it's going to be under My Documents, Visual Studio 2013 Project. So I'm going to hit OK. Now I have a blank project. If for some reason your form isn't up, here I'll close it. You can always come down over to your Solution Explorer and double click on the form. So in the first example, first videos we looked at labels. So I double click a label on here. Then we looked at buttons. Here's a button. And we also looked at text boxes out of my toolbox. So I'm going to get these arranged just a little bit. I'm going to put the text box up here. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to add a second label. And this label I'm actually going to put in front of the text box because I'm going to use it to put a label in front of this text box. And this label I want to use it to put the results of my program into it. So if you remember, first you add your controls to your form. The next thing you want to do is go change the name property of all your controls. So this text box right here, if I look at its name property in the properties window, it's called text box one. That's probably not a good name. So I'm going to erase the one and I'm going to call it name text box. So name because the user is going to type a name into it and text box because it's a text box. You always want to give the name property of your controls a meaningful name. So this label right here on the other hand is just going to sit in front of this text box so people know what it is. It's going to be a label. So since I'm not going to use it in my programming code to do anything I can actually just leave its name property as label2. Now Here's the button. This is where we're going to do our work. Its name property is button 1. Let's not call it button 1. Let's call it display button. So that's a good name. I'm going to click on this label right here because this is where I'm going to show everything. And right now it's called label 1, but I'm going to call it message, except I'm going to try to spell it right. Message label. Now, I've set the names that I needed to change for all these controls. Now I want to look at the text property for some of these. That's what shows up in it. So for label 2, I actually want its text property to be, let's find it right here. You see the text, the text property right now is label 2. I want to make it name colon, because that's what the user needs to type into this text box. The button's going to be its text property is going to be display. And then this label right here, actually, if you remember from last time, there's a couple things we need to do with a label where we're going to display some answers. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the default text in it so it's empty. Then we're going to go up to auto size and make that false. Then I like to take the border style and make it fixed 3D. Now I can make this label any size I want it to be. Okay, so there's the basic elements of my program. At this point, you'd probably want to hit save all to save your work. And we can do some standard coding. I'm going to go into display and double click on it. And let's make it so we take whatever's in the text box 
and put it in the label, but we'll do it with just a little bit of twist. So what's the name of my label? So before I go to write my code, I need to review what I named my controls. So my text box is named name text box. My label is named message label. So I'm going to double click on display to bring up the code window and I want to put a message in the message label. So I'm going to its name is message label. You see it right there. Now I can spell that out or I can hit spacebar and I want to put it into the text property. So I got to use the equal sign and I'm going to I'm going to have it say hello space and I've got my close quote there and then I want to go get whatever is in the text box which I called name text box and I'll hit my spacebar dot text so let's review what this line of code does here it says take the word hello in a space concatenate the text property of the name box onto the end of it then take all of that and put it into the text box of the label. Put it all into the text box of the label. So let's go back and run the program. So I'm going to say start and uh, how about Bubba? We're going to type in Bubba for the name and I'll hit display so now it says hello Bubba. If I come back here and say Fred and say display it says hello Fred. So we're concatenating Let's go back in my code window. I'm concatenating. I'm taking the word hello and I'm adding on to the end of it whatever the user typed into the text box. The way I get to whatever they typed into the text box is by the text property. Okay, so let's put a few more twists on this. Let's go back to our form and let's put a couple radio buttons. So here's a radio button. I'm going to double click. I'm going to add two radio buttons because I want to use these radio buttons to change the color of the text in this label. So first thing you do when you add controls is you change their name. Radio button one is probably not very good. I'm going to call this red radio button. I'm going to click on the second one and call it not radio button two but blue radio button. Okay. Now let's change the text property of each of these controls. So I'm going to come down to dot text to text and I'm going to have this one be marked red and I'm going to change this one's text property to be blue. Okay, now we got it looking nice. Now we want to write some code. So when the user clicks on the red button, we change the color in this label to be red and when they click on this one it's blue. So I'm going to double click on the radio button and I want to change what? I want to change message label message label dot for color that's the foreground color and it's going to equal color dot let's come down here and find red that would be under the R's there it is so color dot red so when the user clicks on the red radio button it's going to trigger the check changed event for red, for red radio button and that's going to change the foreground color to red. Now, let's go back to my form, double click on blue, and we want to do the same thing. So I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to grab this code and I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. Except now we don't want it to be color red, we want it to be color blue. No, not black. There we go, color blue. So, shall we try it out? I'll go back to my form window. Before I run it though, I'm going to be paranoid and I'm going to hit save all. Save my project. And then I'm going to hit start. And let's put Bubba in there again. Display. Bubba's red. Bubba's blue. Isn't that exciting? Got the basic functionality in my program. Now, a few things about radio buttons. You can only have one radio button selected at a time. So if I want to have two different groups of radio buttons that are doing different things, uh, I need to put them 
in separate groups. So even though I've dragged these two radio buttons over here, when I run the program, I can only have one of the four buttons selected. If I want to have two different groups of radio buttons, that's where I have to go to containers, get a group box, and I'm going to grab this group box and move it. Oh, for right now, let me put it right here. Let's make it somewhat smaller. I'm going to select these two radio buttons by rubber banding around them, and I'm going to drag them inside the group box. Oop, got to make my group box a little bigger, don't I? Now, how do I know they're in the group box? Because when I move the group box, make my window a little bigger too. When I move the group box by grabbing its little icon, the radio buttons move with it. If I run the program now, I've got one group of radio buttons on the form and a second group of radio buttons in the group box. So if you need to have them select separately, you got to put them in a group box. We use a group box for two things, breaking up groups of radio buttons, and the other thing we can use it for is to make our program look pretty. So I'm going to go ahead here, stop the program, delete these two radio buttons, grab my color radio buttons and drag them inside and to make my program look a little more aesthetically pleasing move this over here I'm gonna click on the group box and I'm going to change its text property down here in the property window to say color now you can see that my radio buttons are in their own little location and everything looks hunky-dory looks wonderful now couple more elements of the user interface. In a Windows program, when the user is using the tab key on the keyboard, you want to tab through the controls left to right, top to bottom. That's known as tab order. Your tab order is going to be set by the order you put the controls on your form. If you need to go change your tab order, you've got to go to the view menu, tab order, and you see right now this is the first control in my tab order. I don't want that. So I need to click through these. I want this to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And you see that the radio buttons inside the group box became subnumbers of 4. So then I go back to view, tab order, and turn that back off. So now if I run the program and I'm using the tab key, it's moving top to bottom. That's what I wanted. Now, another thing we can do in Windows is set up shortcut keys where you hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and you do a letter to go straight to a control. Now, the way you do that is I'll click on this command button display. I'm going to go to its text property. Oh, there we go. It's text property. And if I put an ampersand in front of a letter, that becomes the shortcut key. So do you, do you see how the D got underlined in display? Now I can go Alt D to trigger that button. Now I'm going to go to the name label and I'm going to put an ampersand in front of it. And then finally I'm going to go to my radio buttons and I'm going to put ampersands in front of the letter R and I'm going to put an ampersand in front of the letter B and it doesn't have to be the first letter. It's whatever letter you put the ampersand in front of, that's going to be the shortcut key. So now when I run the program, if I come in here and say Bubba, I can go Alt D for display. I can go Alt R for red. Alt B for blue. If I want to get back up to the text box for Bubba, I can go Alt N. Now that's a little tricky because when I go Alt N, Windows tries to put the keyboard focus on the label. Labels are read only. So it goes to the next tab order. So since the label, the name label was zero and it can't take the focus, it jumps to number one. All right, that is what I wanted to show you in this program. And keep working and always get in contact with me if you need help.